but Professor Bafo Ajimendia, who is a former senior governance advisor at the United Nations, is also joining us on Zoom. Professor Bafo Ajimendia, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me, and good morning to my good friend in the studio and the others who may be joining. Indeed. You, and I appreciate you cutting short your sleep for the greater <laughs> good this morning. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining mm. us. But we, we, I take it from where Yao Nsako ended, that he knows, he's diagnosed the kind of people that we are, Prof, Professor Bafo Ajmendia, that after all of this debate, we're, gonna, we're going to move on to, to something else and not address the fundamentals of the problem so we don't come back to it. How do we put finality to this somewhat needless debate about our 60-year history, as some have described it, and focus on the next 60 years of our lives, which has no plan? <clears throat> well, how we put the debate behind us is an interesting question. Uh, on one hand, uh, as you know, all people, including Ghanaians, would like to talk. And of course, you have every right to talk when we feel concerned about an issue of national significance. So talking is part of life. Talking is part of democracy. People will have the freedom to express themselves when they, when they have to. So uh, I'm not sure we can put it completely behind us. But I think what is important is for us to acknowledge matters of such significance and move on. Because as uh, Mr. Yaron Safo says, uh, in our political life, uh, this republic, we tend to come across so many interesting matters. We get excited about them. We talk about it and we move on to the other things. But I think somehow we have to find a way to be, begin to nail down what is important in our lives in terms of what we want as a people. We oftentimes talk about them with action uh, is not taken to ensure that such matters are finalized. Uh, so he's right. First, I think our leaders must lead us in such a way that they do not draw us needlessly into the base that are not essential for our lives, especially about matters that uh, the history books clearly confirm. We should not seek to rewrite our history on the history is already known, is well established. And uh, now re referring to what uh, Safwa uh, uh, wrote about and what all of us have been talking about for the past week. I have said elsewhere that uh, politicians do not write history. So if they make uh, such a historical gaffes, I think we can simply let it slide and move on. I think there are very important challenges that we are facing as a people, and that should be our focus. First, every country thrives on the economy. And as we know, our economy has been wobbling for the past decades. It is true that it seems more challenging this time around, but the fact is that right from the beginning, we have not sought to build an independent economy. That is to say, economy that is self-sustaining to a large extent. I understand that no country can be self-reliant, but in areas where the nature has endowed us with the resources, we should be able to develop self-sufficiency in those areas. If you look at our budget, a big outlay goes to uh, take care of our uh, impulse for consumption. And much of this consumption things we import can be produced locally. So I think my point here is that we should be looking at how we develop an economy that is not dependent completely, as we have now, on the global economy. So we have to initiate domestic policies and actions that will help us to achieve that. We can go into details about that. The other challenge we should be concerned about as we move forward is how we organize our politics in such a way that as a nation, we can have some kind of blueprint. And my good friend, uh, uh, Mr. Tamaklo, somebody I admire for his legal expertise, I think 
the NDC NPP, we should begin to talk. I think this country needs some kind of a unified approach to our development. Personally, I'm not happy at all about how our politics has become so partisan and anything anyone wants to do is outrightly dismissed. It, it's really drawing us back. So lately, I'm beginning to think seriously about how we find a way to unify our efforts as a people to ensure that politically and economically, we are all with the same vision and we are pursuing an agenda that is national in, 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 in character and everything. So we can have a, a national focus on how we liberate ourselves. Look, I think uh, if I draw on what Kukupatin said recently, truly, truly, uh, the trajectory of our national efforts uh, so far has not been very good. And I, say, I think he said one thing that really touched me very much. And I hope all politicians should think that way. He said, look, whenever he goes to sleep and thinks of his children, he gets worried because he doesn't know the kind of future his children are going to inherit. And I'm not surprised at all that uh, recently the Senegalese uh, president, a young man, mm -hmm. has instructed Senegalese officials to remove his picture as president from their offices and rather put their children's picture in their offices. See, this Talis without I think, has tried to uh, portray. Because if you look at your children, all politicians in Ghana, if you look at your children, your wives, your brothers, whoever, and think of the future these young people are going to inherit. Are you happy with that? And if you are not happy with that, then we should develop more of a nationalistic approach to what we do than this extreme partisanship that is tearing us apart. So frankly, I now I'm very interested in how we, we as a people strategize to unify our efforts. Even if we have to do what people are afraid to talk about loudly, if we have to do a union government for a period of time to bring us some peace, some focus on our efforts for national development. I'll be supportive of that. Because, frankly, <laughs> I'm not going to say NPP, NDC. We are all Ghanaians. NPP, NDC, and not those of us who are not in any political parties. We are all Ghanaians, and Ghana should be our priority. So please, uh, I hope my good friends can begin to think of that. Of course, I know we have to pursue accountability, transparency, probity, and all these lo uh, uh, lofty ideals that we need to have for us to move forward. But I think the more I think of the future, as Pahu Patin said, the more I get worried because our politics is so dirty, it is so retrogressive, is not productive in any way. And I don't think putting one party away and bringing the other party solves the problem. Because for me, my good friends in both parties, you've been there for 16 solid years. Now we are getting 32 solid years of a full republic. And I cannot proudly say that where we stand today is better than 30 years ago. I cannot proudly say that. And mm -hmm. if that is the case, it's those who have been in power for 16 years. It is your collective responsibility. And that's why I think we need to chart a new course. So let me end my comments on this. Uh, and a very, very instructive issue that you've raised there, not seeking to rewrite our history, the concern that you have is more about thinking about our future. And, 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 and when you think about it, the more you get worried. And is it not concerning that while we were caught in this debate of issues that have already been captured in our history books, as you say, uncontested, undebated over the last 60 years and over, we are sitting here not even having a 60-year plan for the next 60 years ahead of us as a country. Th that certainly gets you worried, does it not? It does. It does. You see, uh, years ago, I think under uh, President Hamas' uh, administration, the NDPC produced a 40-year plan, and that is exactly what the Constitution requires that uh, commission to do. They did it, but perhaps, because even though I know they went around, my, my good friend uh, Neil Thompson and Professor Boche was the chairman at the time. They did the best they could. They went around the country, solicited inputs from everywhere, and produced a very interesting a document. I had the opportunity to look at that document before. But as soon as government changed, 
the incoming government said, look, we can do with this. We can use it. We and that wasn't the first time we have attempted the agenda 2020 before uh, vision 2020, as you say, all kinds of things. But because of the way we have organized our politics, we never achieve any national consensus on what is important to do. You see, so we, we are a country without plan. We sit here, admire other countries. And Ghanaians will be quick to recall Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Huang, 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 Huang. We, we sat all of How we thought of how they came to where they are, just think of it. They did not get here with this extreme partisanship that we have in our country. They did not get us here by throwing a, a plan away every four years or eight years. They did not get to where they are huh, by just... Uh, uh, tearing about everybody apart, they got to where they are with a single-minded approach to their development over a period of time. Over a period of time. And of course, once I'm saying this, I have to also be bold to say that not necessarily within the democratic context that we have. Somebody might say, oh, they were not democratic, but they've gotten to where they are. Mm-hmm. And we are democratic, and we keep talking and talking and do nothing. You see, so... We even I as I talk to you, I'm questioning our practice of democracy. I'm not questioning democracy. Please don't don't get confused with that. Right. Democracy is everybody's uh, is necessary for everybody in the world, but the practice of it varies. So we ha- don't have to stick strictly to uh, what we are written and we say this is democracy. So we have to do this. That is really for me. It's one of the reasons we are not moving forward. Uh, the, the practice of years, our kind of democracy. Our kind of democracy is not helping us. It's a practice. Our kind. So I'm not questioning democracy. We have to be democratic. But the way we, we have structured our democracy, the way we are practicing it, is killing us. That's the basic fact. We don't have, we can, you don't pride yourself on democratic only because every four years you, you somehow manage to have elections, whether people are killed or not, we manage it and we change government or retain government. That's all we have for us, our democracy. Besides that, what can we claim to be an achievement for the past 30 years? Besides achieving successes in changing governments or retaining governments through elections. Hmm. We have been good at electoral democracy, but electoral democracy alone cannot, cannot put bread on your table. Hmm. And, and that's a major issue that you, you raise about the practice of that, that our kind of democracy. And, yes. and the, I was talking to a number of young people on, on, on an X space sometime last week. And this, this issue came up about the offerings of our democracy, our kind of democracy. And, and do you also get the sense when you speak to young people that there's this sense oh, yeah, of dis- despondency and, and disappointment? Correct. Uh, look, I deal with young people, you know, at the foundation, we have the before scholars program, we deal with university students, as I speak to you, have about 120 scholars that we mentor and all. So I'm very closely in touch with young people, especially in the universities. And when you talk to them, when you engage them, they are very disappointed. They don't, they don't know the future <laughs> uh, for themselves. They don't see it. Because we, the elders, and those who have dedicated their lives to the, uh, politics, we are not demonstrating that the future will be bright for them. You see, because look, they all know that our democracy is overly monetized. They all know that politicians steal money and buy their seats in parliament and buy their uh, whatever jubilee house. They all know that for you to win, you got to give voters money. So they say, ah. so this is what democracy means, that you, you have to have money to buy your way into government. Do you all know that those in government cheat, they steal, corruption is everywhere. They all know that if you're a big person, you get a case, uh, 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 you, you end up getting, <laughs> getting away scot-free. They know all this. These are not children. University students are very smart. They read just like you and I read. Okay? So nobody seems to have, well, maybe I'm exaggerating when I say nobody. Most people I talk to, 
don't seem to have the sense that this country has a future that will be brighter for them. It's a strong feeling. And that's why, against all odds, I will say that NDC winning the elections and getting to government, in my humble view, will not change much. They will dispute me, they will disagree with me, but they know that when they come into government, they may not do exactly what the NPP is doing, but ultimately they are not going to change anything. That's my honest belief. But of course, somebody has to win. And I think uh, uh, the people of Ghana will make that judgment themselves uh, uh, in December. But what is going to change? You're going to inherit a country overburdened with debt. You cannot even go and borrow again. Now you want to go and renegotiate with the IMF so that things will be easier for you to borrow again. And then we borrow. We borrow. And we are not looking at productive success of the economy. I mean, I don't, I don't even understand. If, if, in fact, we all put our minds together, <laughs> I think we can radically change certain things that we are doing. But we can do so if this uh, uh, division is bridged somewhere, if not completely merged, at least there should be a bridge that will allow the two sides and all the others to come in and see how we maximize the natural resources that we have, the human resources that we have, so this country can begin to breathe properly. I, I, I strongly, look, and I've gone through this for many years, decades, all the, almost the t- three decades that we have had this republic, mm. greater power of this, since 1996, have actively been engaging on the civil society, civil society side. Mm. And this day when I talk to my friends, uh, CD, the IDEG, uh, Imani, yeah. I listen to all of them and I say, wow, mm. <laughs> Uh, we did this 30 years ago, 1996, Parliament, the institution building. We, uh, we worked on seminars, the Kosumbu Hotel, Elmina, seminars upon seminars, capacity building. And now people still talk about building institutions. It takes 30 years to build an institution before you start developing. Oh, hmm. I, I don't know. I, frankly, I'm getting a little bit, uh, I don't know. Well, well, you, you, you are not alone in this. A number of people feel the same. But I, I, I thank you so much. And, and please stay with us.